This is our final interview in our Champion Series. We trust you have enjoyed them all. I don't want to say that this interview is our best as we've had many great interviews, but this one is certainly the most historically important. What this next champion did was to alter how our sport is today. This person single-handedly achieved something to move the sports of shooting forward into the 21st century. Let me explain. Until 1992, the clay target events of trap and skeet at the Olympic Games were classed as open events. Both male and females could compete for the same medals. As you'd expect, the majority of countries sent men to try and take home those elusive Olympic medals. Just prior to the 1992 Barcelona Olympics, the International Olympic Committee and the International Shooting Sports Federation made an astonishing decision to ban women from skeet and trap competitions at Olympic level starting from the 1996 Games in Atlanta. So the Barcelona Olympics in just a few months time would be the girls last. China decided to enter a young slightly built female as one of their three athletes. Nobody outside of China really took this Chinese woman seriously. Not yet. After three days of competition Shan Zhang had hit all 200 targets in qualification and went on to become the only female in Olympic sport to win an individual gold medal. The embarrassment this caused the administration of our sport was immense. In the year 2000 at the Sydney Olympics, women had their own skeet competition to contest. Let's meet the woman that changed the sport of shooting forever. Now we've got one last interview. This is our very last interview with all of the champions and I believe it's probably one of the most special interviews. As I've said in the introduction, it's a person that changed the course of shooting. Sean, it's great to have you with us. You look younger than the day you won the Olympics. Really? <laughs> I'm younger? <laughs> How long? I'm Australian, I don't lie. I only tell the truth, you should know this. <laughs> Been? Thank you. How have you been? You look really well. I have a happiness life, I think. The last time we met was in Chile in 2011, and you won the World Cup nearly 20 years yes. after you won the Olympic Games. But I had the feeling when I spoke to you after you won in Chile, there was maybe not the same desire for you to still compete. You had nothing more to prove. Do you shoot at all now? No, it's, um, I stopped shooting one year. Can I ask you how you started in shooting and how old were you when this amazing journey all began? When I'm 15 years old, my coach come to, uh, come to my school to uh, chase some young shooters for a China Junior game. So I start shooting uh, um, 16 years old. Why skeet? Why not trap? The skeet coach come. come. Ah. Only skeet coach come. When uh, 1984, I never know about shooting. Um, not many people shoot uh, uh, clay target. I think in, in uh, 1985, I only saw maybe um, 20 uh, 20 shooters should skeet women. Before the Barcelona Olympic Games, you had won the World Championship in 1989 and you you uh, again won a medal in 1990, I think in Moscow. You won another medal in the World Championship. And then in 1991, you came to Australia for the World Championship in Perth with many flies landing all over your face. I remember this time was... Yeah. How did you get selected for the 1992 Olympic Games? Why did they pick you? From 1989, I win the first uh, world, champ, world champion. And uh, in 1990, I shoot two times nine, 197. In Moscow, I win brown medal, got the uh, quarter for Olympic Games. So when we have uh, many elimination for elimination for the for the Olympic Games, my my team leader and my coach think I'm I'm very good because nine 
197 can make final before um, Olymp all the Olympic Games. My um, The Chinese team didn't want me to go because I'm a girl. A lady cannot to win any um, any medals in Olympic Games. So in China, did were you better than most of the men? Did you think you should have been in the team? Or did you think they picked you because you were a woman? No, no, no. They, they, they didn't want to pick me. They didn't want to pick me go. They, they just want somebody can win. So when I... <laughs> well, that, that was a good choice. This man now is the president of China. <laughs> yeah, my leader. This is a team leader, team manager of a national team. We have one. Uh, we had one media day. Um, he told all the reporters said, Chinese. We have one uh, lady shooter. She will going to uh, get get a. Uh, beat all the men in Olympic Games. Mm. Was this man? Was his name Confucius? <laughs> he, and uh, his name is Zhao Guorui. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Man. Very smart man. That's very. Good. <laughs> um, you did shoot, uh, obviously, the possible at the Olympic Games, and many very high scores in your shooting career. Can you tell me, what did you do, your training, your mindset? How did you hit so many targets so well? Uh, I think it's first I'm not shooting very, very much. And I feel, um, I feel shooting in my heart and in my mind, in my life. I can feel everything. And uh, uh, I tell everybody, when I stand in the uh, station, I can feel even my where is my hair. So I touch the gun is uh, look like my arm. Um, and in I'm very thankful for my coach in um in 1990. We have the three months. Three months I pack. I practice my gun is no. One cartridges. Three months I practice my gun every day. It's no cartridges. So um, after these three months, I think the gun look like my arm. Oh. And uh, and in uh, 1991, one Asian Asian uh, clay target competition in Beijing, we have a very strong, very strong windy. I can see is a house drum. In a high house, only can fly to the low house. Oh. The low house, yeah. The low house, when they fly and they come back um, in the station eight. Wow. But I, yeah, I still shoot 25. <laughs> Amazing. You speak of the love of the sport. In 1992, you shot and won the Olympic Games, an incredible effort. And then we were told that there would be no women in shooting after that point. How did that feel to you when they took away your love of the sport or ability to compete at the highest level? Uh, first, I think I'm so lucky. I win and I went Olympic Games. Um, I'm, I'm so, so sorry about all the um, skid shooter, all the skid shooter, even my son, my friend, many Chinese skid shooters stop shooting. They go have to choose a larger job. Were you tempted to shoot double trap? Um, when I when stopped the skid, I went to the uh, university. I have sometimes Sometimes have some shoot and uh, and uh, go uh, competition. Did you like double? Just, did you like it? Double uh, no. I no. I didn't like it much some days oh. either. <laughs> I know you will be like <laughs> uh, but I think shoot is no different. I want to take you back to the Barcelona Olympics on the training days, the practice before the competition. And I want to tell you a true story with 
I was there to watch with an Australian man called John Summers. He was the Australian skeet shooter. And I saw you training and I was watching my friend John shoot training also. And after he'd finished training, I said, why are the Chinese sending this girl? And John said to me, she hasn't missed yet in training. She has not missed anything. He watched you train. And there are stories that in training, before you hit 200 out of 200 in qualification, you hit all the targets in training also. Is that true? I miss one when I finish training. After training? When I'm not missing training, but make me very scared, very scared. I think, oh, no miss. I told my, I told my coach, I have to go to miss one target. So I just standing in the station four. My coach shot one target. I boom, miss. <sighs> I'm relaxed now. <laughs> so <laughs> the only target you missed in training and qualification was one that you deliberately missed on station four so you could sleep better before the competition. Yes, because I'm very scared, no miss. Well, I never, I never doing this three, three days and no miss. <laughs> I never. So very, very hard. Um, big strange, big strange in my heart. And uh, for me, I think I have interesting story. I want to, I want to tell you. I have two times. Uh, um, I don't know what has happened. I, the first time in the 1990 Asian game, Beijing, my first time to play 10 pin, play 10 pin bomb bowling. Yeah. The fir first time in Beijing 1990, um, before game, before my competition one week. So I play pin, I play bowling. Make me hard everywhere. My muscle, I think I cannot work. Yeah, I cannot work. If I stand in, I can't sit in. If I sit in, I can't stand in. Um, but I shoot 197. This is my best score, even training. So two years when the Barcelona Olympic Village, wow, has a very nice 10 beam bowling. Is so I'm very happy I can go to play, play again. You know, so I'm playing, I make many, many uh, shooters come with me to playing, but I shoot well. So I, I don't know. I think this is good for me because when I play in a, play in a uh, barring, can relax and uh, clear my man, it's very good. And uh, make my muscle is Relax. I think you should try this. You know, Why did you wait till now to tell me this? <laughs> take, take you back to after day two of competition in Barcelona. You were on 150 out of 150 on your own. But the next person on 149 from the USA was, many people say, the world's best shooter in Matt Dreich, very famous shooter from America. Did you think about this when you went to bed after day two? Um, I sleeping well first day. I sleeping well second day. I know I have three shooters shoot 75. And the second day, I don't know how many shooters shoot 150. Ah. But in but I meet him with my another leader. He's very happy. And come to me, Sham, you're so good. Only one shoot 150. He taught me this. I I just I just saw him and say nothing. I think I, I remember this stuff. I just want let this one not in my mind. So I'm going to play Barin. Um but I'm not sleeping well the night time. I dream. I have two dreams. In the, all the night, I dream I shoot two hundred. I dream I'm standing in the um, in the uh, gold medal podium. Well, the dreams come true because the next day you yeah. hit fifty out of fifty, and then 
a very exciting final. You went from first to fourth and back to first. Your emotions in the final must have been up and down, up and down. How well do you remember the final? I don't know. I'm from first to fourth. I just shoot. I know I missed station for low house. So you didn't know if you were first or fourth. You every target was the same. I'm I'm not to think about. <laughs> well, okay. So you win the Olympic Games. Um, you you go back to China. How were you treated back home? Ah,、uh, I think I'm a hero now. After. When when I come back China, everybody know me and the, all the flower. I can't carry all the flower,、wow. and the, when I when I um go fly in Beijing, I saw my parents very happy. Do you understand how many men quit shooting <laughs> ski after 1992? It was、mm, finish. It, We spoke with a man called George Digweed, who is a very famous shotgun shooter from England, maybe the best at sporting clays. He was going to take. Yeah, he knows you because he said, "I was going to shoot skeet, but the woman from China won, so now I shoot double trap." <laughs> Many people. But- He's still not win. You win. <laughs> I'll tell him that too. I will tell him. Charlie, can I ask you? Can I ask you about the equipment you used in 1992? Which, which gun did you use? Chinese one. I use Chinese gun and Chinese、uh, cartridges. What are they called? What is the gun name and the cartridges name? Um, we call Tang An. A、uh, shotgun and the Jialin. Jialin, a very famous shell. Where is this shotgun now? Where is this gun? Cut. Ah,、oh, I would have bought it for <laughs> at least one hundred dollars. I would have bought this gun. <laughs> It's a very famous gun. Why?、Uh, why? Why did they cut it? Um, because Chinese know that people cannot have the gun. Olympic Museum. Um. Somebody want to ask me about these questions, and also some museum want want this gun, but they say no. Did you cry?、Mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> I cannot. I never cry. <laughs> Can I ask you also now about the technique for skeet that the Chinese use? It is it is different. You look at the American technique or the Italian technique. It is different. Um, in China, they don't move the gun as far to the targets. Is this the only technique that is taught to shoot skeet in China?、Mm, the Chinese, I think Chinese shooter never know how to shoot him. They they learn from America, they learn from Italy, they learn from everybody. Also, the double trap shooter always want to learn from you, but I. When I shooting, I just want doing what I feel. I feel the gun in my heart. I feel the gun is with my bodies together. My first coach is who come to、uh, who come to choose me. He's a very nice coach, and uh, uh, he was a national coach. When I when I went to the、uh, shooting range the first time, my coach gave me three cartridges. I shoot two. In the first time, I never touched the gun.、Um, at the same time, is national team training in Chengdu. You know, Chengdu is my hometown. In Chengdu Gun Club, so when I shoot the two of the three, everybody think, "Wow, you you have the right right person to shoot." So I start my skeet shooting. Four months from start to four months. The first time I shoot、uh, the crack competition, I shoot one eight nine. Wow! <laughs> I shoot one eight nine. This this ball same same a、uh, champion of China the same year. So everybody knows. One of the 
of the biggest things with international skeet is of course getting the technique of the mount correct. Were you able to practice this at home away from the range? Um, eight, eight hours every day and uh, um, just to practice my gun and the, throughout the, throughout the um, target. Seven days a week, eight hours? Or how, did you have a day off? Six and a half. Wow, very busy schedule. And how many targets a day? Not shoot cartridges, only throw target. Ah, I understand. Um, with your setup, um, as Russell said, you often set your gun about halfway, I think, between the, ha the house and the middle peg. Is that correct? Your whole point. I think it's more in with the, uh, with the house. A third? It's not half. Yeah. No, I, I always in a uh, little close okay. to the uh, house. Okay. And where do you look? Just outside the window. Sean, do you understand what you did for women in sport all over the world? Not just in shooting. The enormity of your win in Barcelona was good for women everywhere. If you hadn't have won that gold medal in Barcelona, there may have been no women's ski in Sydney. Do you understand how much good you did for this sport? When I win gold medal, many many shooters come to say this. Everybody very happy. Look like the uh, I remember as many people come to say is uh, very happy. Uh, the lady can win. Um, it it did change our sport. It made the IWSF and the IOC introduce equality for both men and women. But I think you made this happen much quicker than they wanted it to happen. So I think it's a, a great thing for everybody that you won this gold medal. But I also think the fact that you were very humble, you were very shy, you were um, a, a, a very young, innocent young girl that nobody thought could do this. And it was great to see that you could close the barriers between men and women. It was a truly historical moment. Thank you, thank you. I, I never know this. <laughs> <laughs> You're still modest. Can I ask you um, a question that we've asked many of our people through, through these interviews? And you have seen many changes to the sport. Which of the final systems that the IWSF use was your favorite? Which do you like the best? I think for shooter is a uh, um, for shooter. I think is a take score and the final. But for media, for me, media, for uh, for watch, is a uh, now is more interesting for watch. Yeah, everybody says the same. For to watch, it's better now. For the shooter, the old way is better. Um, yeah. Just when I saw you compete in 2011, which was the last time I saw you compete, you were using a Beretta shotgun. Um, you changed from the Chinese gun to Beretta. Was it hard to change guns? Not hard for me. The Chinese gun that you used, you hit 200 out of 200. Why change <laughs> guns? Why? <laughs> Why not keep using well, Chinese guns? You know, Chinese guns, Chinese gun is uh, uh, really, really, really easy to broken parts. We not have a, a good, good uh, material. When I shoot a Chinese gun, I can doing all the um, parts change. I can, I can fix gun by myself. <laughs> so you also <laughs> a gunsmith as well as a shooter. <laughs> you do both. <laughs> yes. Um, Another question uh, that we have asked many of our people that have joined us for interviews. On the different methods that countries use to select the teams. In Italy, the coach selects the team. In the United States, they have two competitions. Whoever comes first or second is the team. In China, what is the system for selecting Olympic team? We have the mini competition to, uh, to make point. Now, the Chinese national team um, make the point of all the World Cup 
if you win gold medal, you get 20 points. If you make final, you maybe you make 10 points. So the how the point who who the uh, they take the um big point most point to Olympic game. You earn points at a variety of competitions, and the highest point earner goes. I think this is good yeah. because the people, the shooter, only only to think about you shooting, and uh, when you make the enough point, you never worry. Is I'm not go, I'm going. And also we have a four times elimination for the for for the how Chinese shooters, every shooter, all the shooter can come to have the uh, elimination, but you have to go to win to make the point. So you spoke before about training six and a half days a week. I believe that is still the training regimen for the Chinese team. Um when I when I knew shooter, I should I shoot every day, but now it's a, always a, um, five days or the five and a half. And for everyone in the team? Yeah. Together? Like, is everyone together or are you all over China? So we have um, 20 parents of the uh, shooting team, shoot, uh, three target shooting. So they come from 20 different areas in China to for the one. Yeah. That is a lot yeah. of shooters to pick from. With all the lady shooters that you have seen in your international career, who did you think was the best shooter in skeet that you saw outside of you, outside of China? Which shooters did you admire the most? I can't answer because I never interested about competition. Yeah. I never think about who win competition. Is that the Chinese way to make sure that the competitor only thinks about themselves? You never sort of understood that Kimberly Road may be in the competition or it, you didn't care who the competition was? I didn't care. Yeah. Always Dexter tell me, who win, who win, who win. I said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's talk about Dexter, okay? Because Dexter, you married a man from my hometown here in Melbourne. Um, you met him overseas when Dexter was the, the assistant manager for the Australian team. And then you kept him in China. You took away our manager. <laughs> You're very bad. Girl. <laughs> when you've come back to Australia, um, we've enjoyed having you here. And when you competed in Australia, the competition raised. But you, in the back behind you, behind your shoulder, you have a sash from Australian National Championship. I don't know which one is mine. I think not mine or, or Dexter. The blue one is yours, the blue sash. <laughs> I can't remember. It's not me putting there. <laughs> you have won too many competitions now. You can't remember what you've won. <laughs> you are many times champion. I, I was hoping you guys were going to stay here. I enjoyed having you here. And I was very sad to see you go. Is there any chance you'll ever be back to Australia? I, I remember when we together in when we uh, shoot together, and uh, I, I can I can remember how your your young uh, little daughter when your daughter is young is a little one. I'd like to send her to China with you for some years now, and we will get her back when she is grown up. You saw this one many times. I know. I, I would like to come back. Um, I have good memories of China. Tell, tell us, Shan, what are you doing now in your life? What, what is your occupation? One year ago, I changed my job. I come to look after valuable, Sichuan province of valuable. So Volleyball. I always, uh, uh, yes, I stand in the tall man, tall girl. No longer do you do anything with shooting. You're, you're finished with the shooting team? I just think I need to change something. So my boss changed me to valuable. He wants me um, can, can take the Sichuan province valuable team get better. China national uh, team women win Olympic gold medal three times. Do you have a sore neck from always looking up at them? <laughs> yes, fix <pick> my leg. <laughs> you need massage. Always. Just so it's no solid now. 
Sean, um, even though you do not have any more involvement with the shooting team, do you still look at the scores the Chinese women shoot at World Cup? No, you are finished completely. Yes. Just, uh, just uh, my husband always told me about some something. I said, okay, okay, okay. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, it's a women's best tool. Forget what our husband says. He's an he's interesting man. It's an incredible journey that you've been on. And I, I was one of the very lucky people to say that I saw you win your Olympic gold medal and you changed our sport forever. So we appreciate your time and your thoughts about how to become a champion like yourself. So thank you very much. Thank you for inspiring so many women and for being with us. I truly appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Narn. Want to see you in China. It sounds good. <laughs> thanks, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.